Welcome back to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sandy. So let's jump into the video for this week. I do want to tell you that later in the video, I wanted to kind of take something that I talked about maybe two weeks ago a little further. I share with you how I process critical comments or just maybe not the best comments from my family. I'll link that video wherever it is here. But I thought I really wanna give some feedback on how you can help your loved ones give you better feedback. Cause Grady and I had a little bit of that in the beginning. And instead of just like throwing him out and being like, well, you don't give good feedback. I started asking different questions. And I also have a section for parents, how you can give good feedback, better feedback to your kids as they're creating things. So all that is a light turn in the video. I'll see you at the end. Okay, Grady and I are in the car. <laughs> and we were talking about the video from last week. Well, it just went off zombies. <laughs> and the reason you shouldn't say professional office is because you can't say it. He's, he's over here going, you always drill. How do I do my lips? <laughs> I do always sound drunk or half the time, but I'm not drunk. Okay, anyways, I just wanted to pick up the camera because we were laughing really hard about that. And I was like, oh, I wish I had this on film, but I do have this camera, so. <laughs> okay, there you go. I'm feeling a little blah today. It's partly because the last week has been extremely physical, a lot of outdoor painting, packing my gear, just really physical days and long, long work days because I've had some extra stuff on my plate. And this morning I woke up feeling it in a big way. So this morning was really productive with just, I was like, I don't feel great. So I'm gonna get all the stuff that I don't wanna do when I do feel great done. So things like laundry and I had some medical supply stuff that was hanging over me that I needed to make calls and all of that stuff. But now I'm wanting to paint. And I don't often feel stuck anymore, but I am finding a consistent pattern of stuckness. And it's, it's when I don't have any big paintings in the works. I've usually got a couple going that I'm working on. Actually, I do have some that I haven't finished. Maybe that's what I should do. Let me just stay on task though, what I wanted to share. Cause I am excited about, I do feel excited about what I decided I was going to do. So what I do now when I feel like that, when I'm like, I don't, I definitely don't feel like starting a new painting, a big painting like on canvas because I just don't have anything that I feel fired up about or that feels interesting. So what I'm going to do is what I do all the time. There's really a day I don't do this, but definitely when I just don't feel, but I do want to, that, that just means fill up for painting much. I kind of just want to sit down and paint. What I like to do is take a sketch or a painting. So it can be a finished painting or it can be a sketch that's not even completed. And I pick a different medium than what that painting or sketch was done originally in and do smaller, actually the size doesn't matter, but I do sketches of that painting. So let me give you an example. The other day I had just a few minutes, like five minutes, maybe not even that much. I think I was in between stirs of the spaghetti or something like that, and I hadn't had a chance to paint yet. So I just opened the sketchbook oops, and I opened it to this page. I like this sketch. There are things about it that I liked. And if you remember, this is one that the rain started. I was out sketching this and it started raining and I had to like wrap up really quick, but there were things about it that I really liked. So I thought, okay, I'll do that one. So that was done with my ink tents blocks. And so then I chose, decided to do watercolor. I mainly chose watercolor because it was quick and I had, you know, five minutes before I needed to get back to dinner. So then I did this really quick sketch. It's a really great process to do guys. There's just something about picking different mediums and taking a painting or a sketch and trying different things with it and doing it over and over and over. I do that all the time. That is just a part of my practice. What that does is one, it gives me something to do, something to paint. If I'm like, what should I paint? And two, it helps me familiarize myself with a subject. 
Three, it's gonna give me different mark making and different colors by doing multiples in different mediums. And there's some other things I'm sure too, but I can't think of what they are now. And if I remember, then I'll pop that in here. But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go sit down. I'm, I'm gonna get out my watercolors. I'm gonna pick some sketches or some paintings and do them, I think, in watercolor because that feels like an easy subject or an easy medium to do on this day where I'm feeling a little tired, but still want to paint. I did all the like hard, yucky stuff earlier today and now I wanna do something fun this afternoon. I think what I'm going to do is possibly explore some of these creek paintings or creek sketches that I've been doing. I've been going to the creek, to a local park, and just been note taking. So I have a bunch of charcoal sketches. I have a few watercolor sketches now, maybe oil pastels, and I haven't combined the two parts of the landscape that I've been sketching. I've been sketching the creek, and like the water movement, and then I've been sketching the mountain with all the trees. So I think I'm gonna sit down and do that. Oh, this is important. You're not trying to replicate it. What you're trying to do is just use that as your inspiration, the same way you used it when it was in front of you, whether it was a still life or a landscape. Okay, you did it like that, but maybe when you were doing it like that, you were thinking, should I do a dark background? Should I make those trees blue instead of brown? This is the time to do that. But even if you kind of replicate it, you can't completely replicate it if you're using a different medium, and that's what's nice about it. Okay, enough yapping. I need to go paint. call this one done. This was really fun. It just felt relaxing to do this and I used this reference 
and oh yeah and my sketches that I have here I taped them up on the window seal I think that was pretty much all I used as far as reference and just used my memory oh maybe maybe these also played a little bit of a part like the blue trees I've been trying to play around with different colors for the trees instead of it reading too representational as the color that was really fun I loved how it turned out and it was fun using a different medium let me show you what I've got going on here I'm about to start a new painting and I've decided the subject is going to be a landscape that I've been revisiting over and over and over and I decided to get out all my sketchbooks I feel like I've got a lot of notes notes to pull from I feel like I know the landscape well uh, this this is not gonna be great footage of these because it's so dark in here right now but uh, those are some oil pastels oh that's a watercolor a lot of these were done from the sketches I already had I got my sketchbooks out I have three or four paintings in here about three in here and I just got them all out so I could just kind of reference them and decide which colors I wanted to use and there's just a lot of information for me to choose from what I'm gonna do first though I mixed up a cream because I really love sketchbook page like a green, uh, not green cream sorry I had to switch the microphone around because you probably couldn't hear me I really like a cream sketchbook page and so I thought I wanted to kind of capture that at least start with that so I've mixed up a cream with what's my cream mixture white obviously and raw sienna and white make a great like bright white and then I put just a kiss of French ultramarine in there to knock it down just a little bit I've added some water because I just you know I just need it to be kind of thin and a base I'm going to slap that on and then I'm going to start looking through my sketches and decide on how I want to start my composition but I'm pretty excited it's really nice to have all of these notes kind of in my tool bag to just pull from Ooh, I like this part of this one and can I replicate that from watercolor and that kind of thing so I'm gonna get started The show we work to answer the question, how do you get better at painting? I'm your host, Kelly Amy Powers. In this week's artist interview, I'm talking with the voice you just heard, mixed media artist, Laura Horn. In the conversation, you'll discover how Horn designed her own self-study. In a surprising way, she creates and integrates reference materials. Up the lounge room, tiny little laptop desk, and gradually I increased my space and took over the house. So <laughs> the corner of the lounge room ended up becoming the whole dining room and filled up the place with canvases and I was I was just so big it a priority in my life. It definitely started as a hobby and I had no idea that I would end up um, becoming a full-time artist. Initially it was just about having fun and I had some friends that I would catch up with and we all all right, so I searched and searched for two things. One, I know I did a lot of footage of this painting because it went through 50 million phases and I remember documenting it. Can't find the footage anywhere. Then I searched and searched the house to look for the painting and I was like, where is that? I remembered it being in the state of like, it wasn't finished, wasn't done with it, but I remembered it. And then I found this that is obviously it with it painted over. So maybe I erased the footage thinking, well, I'm done with that painting. I just kind of, it was like, I'm not happy and I need to start over. But I was cracking up. I mean, I tore the place apart. So I don't have that to show you or the footage of all the painting in 50 million versions, but I do have two other paintings that I did in the same manner that I wanted to show you. Does that help? I don't know. First off, here's a smaller one I did that I was really happy with. So I'm happy with that one. And then I have another one here 
This one I was super happy with also. I've got it on my mantle, like on the fireplace hearth in our den because this is the view that overlooks our property and our neighbor's property and I'm just really happy with it. It's just loose and abstract and I'm just happy with it. So I don't think I have these up on the website yet, but they are for sale, I think. I'm not sure about if I want to part with this one. I'd have to check with Grady, but it is really pretty. It's just got a nice composition, I think. Very happy with it, and I hope you like it, and I hope that satisfies the, uh, here's a little glimpse of the painting I'm doing that I never finished, that I wiped over. That's part of artist life. Okay, so let's get into some paintings now that I do actually finish and that turned out good. It's quite the obstacle course now to get into my studio. <laughs> Look, I'll give you a down here view. I mean, stuff everywhere. Before long, you won't even be able to get in here. You have to watch your step. Big time. Wonder how many times I'll knock that over. But what I'm doing, I want to set up right here. I'm kind of feeling over landscapes right now. I want to get back to still lives. I set this one up and it's making me quite excited. I think I'm gonna do that one next. But right now I thought, let's do what I like to do a lot of times, and it is paint things I've already painted. And I can play around a little bit with it. There's some things that I want to try a little different. This will give me the opportunity to do that. I also feel like I need to get kind of warmed back up to be able to finish this painting. There's not a lot. I'm thinking about putting a strawberry right here and I need to finish this greenery and basically that's all I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do another one on paper and that will be really fun. I'm gonna try to just be super, super loose and get after it. I absolutely love how this turned out. Definitely a sellable one, and I think one that will get snatched up pretty quick. One of the reasons I'm glad that I like painting on paper so much is because it does give a little bit cheaper option for people to still be able to get one of my paintings. And I think I'm gonna name this one something like Snowfall. Uh, let's see, wait, I wrote down some names. Where are they? <laughs> I never can remember. Oh, this one's kind of long watching night snowfall from the kitchen yeah that that won't work that's kind of long <laughs> but uh, i did want to put something about the snowfall in the title and it just feels like nighttime in the warm cozy house sitting in the kitchen watching the the snowfall from you know the kitchen window that's what i feel like it captures there'll be some kind of title like that to it that's what i wanted to capture 
Let's talk a little about how you could possibly get better feedback from those that you are wanting to get feedback from. I shared a couple weeks ago a video on criticism and how I deal with that. But one of the things I didn't talk about in that video was how Grady and I have kind of developed our feedback process. I realized early on that I was asking him questions he could not answer. That's the first thing. Ask questions that they can answer. Grady is colorblind, so I definitely do not need to be asking him things about color. But I would also ask him questions that he just didn't have an artist mind about. He doesn't know about value and composition and pattern. So when I ask him about those things, it's like, could even see just the overwhelmingness come over him. And he would usually like leave really quick. He'd be, oh, I don't know. <laughs> what we used to do was Grady would say, please don't tell me all the things that's wrong with it. Just let me look at it for a minute because I, I didn't realize, but he would come in and I'd be like, oh, well, this isn't done or I didn't do blah, 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 blah. And he would be like, he doesn't, he didn't want to hear that. It complicated it. This was already too complicated. So he just wanted to be able to look at it and assess it. My question started being, hey, babe, could you come in here? He would come in and I would say, does anything stand out to you? And what I mean by that is not in a good way, does anything good stand out? But he did have a good eye. And I think most people that don't know anything about art can see when something weird is standing out in a painting. The reason they're good at it, it's a little bit like the mirror. You know, I'm always looking backwards in the mirror. The reason they're able to see it is because they're not so engrossed in that painting and anything odd, like glaring, will stand out to them. He doesn't have to say this, but basically like, I don't know why, but this white, this area here is too white. Like that's too light or this is popping out to me. If I try to ask him more about that, like why, or do you think, what if I did this? Or do you think this area, he'll, <laughs> This is usually his response. I, I don't know, that's too much. And he's headed out the door. I mean, he's he usually can't even get the uh, out because he's out so fast. He usually has about one answer to one question in him, and then that's it. If I start asking, he's always he does that. So ask good questions and ask questions that they can answer. Find out what they are good at seeing and what feels overwhelming. Make sure you're not asking artist questions. And I would not be asking, do you like this? Because remember we talked in that video about art is so subjective. So it just really doesn't matter if they like it or not because it may not be their thing. And that's totally fine, more than fine. I want to address parents next. I have so many kids in my life from different ages and have seen either how parents respond or don't respond and what's helpful. And there's times that I'll speak into some of my friends who are parents' lives and say, hey, this would be more helpful. So I thought I would share that here. I had a, a young friend of mine who was in middle school, I think she was in middle school at the time, and she texted me and said, hey, Miss Sandy, could we have a Zoom so you could give me some feedback about my art. She said, cause my parents just say everything's good and I know it's not and I need some real feedback. So there's a hint right there. That's my first thing. Don't say everything is good because your kids don't believe you. And I didn't believe my parents either. Now, did they probably think everything was good? No, I was gonna say maybe yes, but no. Mm -mm. I'm sure that they didn't, but that's just the parent answer. So let me give you some feedback on maybe what would be more helpful. So number one, don't say everything is good. You also don't need to say that it's bad, but I do think that you can ask good questions. So maybe they're always bringing you stuff that you're like, and it just feels nice to say that's good or to put it on the fridge. So I have friends who will say, I mean, I just don't understand art. They talk about things that it's just not in me to understand. And I get that. So what I will encourage them though is or ask good questions. So ask them, ask your child what they like about it. Ask them what they like about it. Ask them what they would change if they could. And then if they say something, maybe you can encourage them, hey, go do another one then and do that. Play with that area or put that tiger in that you would have liked to have put in. But also encourage enjoyment. If you have a child that's always real negative 
oh, this isn't very good or however it comes out, really push back on that. I do that with my adult students and then kid friends that I have. They're not allowed. That kind of language is not allowed in my classes or in my whatever I'm doing with kids. I, especially with kids, I want to nip that in the bud quick. I want them to understand that this is dialogue and pattern that you're going to have for life if you continue this kind of thinking. And I also want them to understand that it's not helpful to have a rrrrness about your work. It's not helpful for anyone, the person that's trying to enjoy it and look at it, and it's not helpful for, for you. I want to encourage enjoyment of just being able to create. I want to help them have a better critical eye than just, oh, I don't like it, because usually they do like it. That's not really what this kind of language is about. Sometimes it's more about, I'm trying to get reaction from you because you're not giving me good reaction. Sometimes it's just a pattern that they've developed in a way to get you to engage. So I would probably just be like, well, if you can't come to me with some positive stuff, like we're just not gonna have that language. Now you may wanna deal with it in a different way, but that's how I am. I'm like, Psh, I just kind of zip it pretty quick. Also let them know that this kind of blah, blah, blah language and dialogue will continue to just kill joy. One of the things that I see not only in kids, but also in adults is how perfectionism, there's part of perfectionism, perfectionism that's really good, but often what I see with perfectionism is that it is a stealer of joy. It steals and kills enjoyment of whatever you're doing. It's also very self-focused if you think about it. It isolates others. So I like to push back on perfectionism and also just kind of call it for what it is. There's, there's a difference. There's nothing wrong with striving to do better, but when you can't see anything good in what you've done, because if it's not perfect, then it's trash. There's a problem with that. And I personally want to push back on that with friends, adults or kids that I see that in. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say about that except that I, I definitely have seen that pattern. It's great to work hard at something, but perfectionism can just cloudy and really darken your judgment and being able to see well. Another response you can give is, I don't really understand this area. You don't have to say it ugly. You can just say it with like, ooh, tell me. Tell me about this area because I don't understand what this is. Especially if you have a really young child and they seem like they know exactly what this is about and you're like, I don't know what this is. Sometimes kids will bring that to me and I'll say, ooh, tell me about it. Tell me what this is. I don't really even understand this, but it looks so exciting. So those kinds of responses can be good. Tell me about it and tell me what you like about it. And also say positive things that you can say. So let's say you're an artist and you have a kid. Say things that they've done that you see that maybe they didn't even mean to do it, but they did it. So maybe it's composition, value, maybe the design. Maybe they've done a really neat area with negative space, maybe chair and the way they've accidentally created the chair legs all different and the spaces are different, or maybe the space between the sky and the earth, that there's a nice negative, pleasing to your eye rest place. Point those things out because then you're teaching them and helping them understand design and value. Maybe you see some value. Maybe you see an area where there's complementary, complementary colors. You can point that out or neat, marks, mark making, point those things out. Another thing I think that happens a lot with kids that you can, whether you're an artist or not an artist, that you can probably notice and encourage, it's how that kid uses color. I've had friends that will say, oh, that sky, it's not pink, a sky is blue. I don't, I mean, I think we probably maybe all know that, let's not point those kinds of things out. I wanna encourage a kid to use color. So maybe you do see that they painted the grass pink instead of green. Point that out. Ooh, I love that you didn't use green there, that that was pink. That just cheered up the whole thing. That just spoke light and playfulness, those kinds of things. So I do like to point out if I feel like they've done the tiger in purple, that that's really fun. 
and encourage that kind of thing. So that is definitely not comprehensive, but I hope it does get you thinking and get you maybe inspired to help a young one in your life see their work maybe in a different way and be encouraging to them. And please feel free to send this video to other maybe family members or friends that you're like, oh, this could be really helpful to them with their own child. And I also hope it will help you be less critical and judgmental, but a good thinker about your own work. Maybe these are questions you need to ask and be able to see about your own work. Okay, now let's go look at this painting that I finished that I've been working on for forever and I finally finish it. Yeah, good job, Sandy. Good job beforehand. Giving you a thumbs up on finishing that. I'm back working on this painting. It needs to get done because uh, we want to use it as advertisement for the spring workshop. I have painted in strawberries right here 50 million times, painted them in and taken them out. And I just, my eye does not want those there. I'm gonna just take them back out. And I know a lot of y'all are like, no, leave them. And then I worked on this, but I went overboard, which is fine. So now I'm going to paint back some of the pattern. And I did some work up here. So you can tell that this is a reflection. I took away the dock that was there because it was kind of strange. And then I think I'm gonna be done. Now, if this freaks you out, if you're like, oh no, you painted the pattern in, that's fine. Like I have put things in and taken things out so many times and that's how you get movement. So I'm not nervous. I, I have forgotten what I used to mix this color though, but that's okay because I've done that a few times and it's a little different around and that's perfect. That's what you want. I personally don't want all this to be uniformed and you can tell some of these squares or different blues. Yeah, so that just doesn't bother me a bit. In fact, I want that. I want it, want it. I feel like that looks a lot better. I toned some of this down, not a whole lot, but some. So it looked a little more random and not so uniform. And let's see, oh, and the strawberries are gone, but see how you can still see little bits of the pink? And to me, that's priceless. You can see some color in there. In fact, I wish there was more of that through here. That last painting that I just finished, the one on canvas, got snatched up really fast when I shared it on Instagram. Make sure you're following me over on Instagram because if you're interested in getting one of my paintings, that is usually where I show them first and sometimes they get snatched up pretty quick. The painting I did on paper has not sold yet. I don't even know if I've shared it over on Instagram. I can't remember, but you can go check out those paintings and a whole lot of other paintings up on my website. I'll link that here. It's also linked at the very end of the video. I haven't asked you guys this in quite a while, but if you have not subscribed and you're enjoying the video, will you subscribe and also giving it a thumbs up always helps. All those things tell YouTube, yes, people like this channel and I would really appreciate it. I'll see you back here next week. Bye guys.